I am Rodrigo Duterte, I'm a Filipino. I love the Philippines because it is the land of my birth. It is the home of my people. Given what the president had said before, and I, it kind of like maybe attacked the credibility of the church. Oh, yes, of course. The, the, the freedom of expression is accorded to everyone, including the church. And of course, the church, whether we like it or not, is very important in this nation as forming part of our culture and our sense of identity. So just on the survey, do you think that there is some kind of buyer's, buyer's remorse in the public? Buyer's remorse? Yeah. I don't think so, because as I said, that's the trend for all administration. And so it, it, it it's, did not just happen in the administration of uh, President Duterte. All administrations suffered from similar. Okay. Um, do you think that that's something that you have to solve, and you being the new spokesperson is one way of curing maybe um, yung strategy of communicating the programs of the president wasn't as effective as before? Do you think that's, you, you, you being the new spokesperson, do you think that's part of the tactical move of this administration to maybe combat that slide, or not one slide, but dips in the ratings? I don't want to be presumptuous. <laughs> I do not really know why he chose me. <laughs> he, in fact, declared it's a personal decision, but I know my job, and I intend to do it well. Okay, thank you. Okay, follow up. Ina, follow up. Follow up. Uh, Rose Novenario. Hi. Sir, follow up ko lang po yes, sa church. Sir, ano po yung tingin nyo na magiging tunay na paghihilom po para po magkasundo ang Estado at ang simbahan tungo po sa pagwawagi ng war against drugs? I can give you a whole lecture on that, no? But, you know, um, we do have separation of church and state, but um, because we're both serving the interests of our um, countrymen, no? So naniniwala po ako na... Um, mas mabuti na magkaroon ng uh, pagkakasunduan sa parte ng simbahan at ng ating uh, gobyerno. No? Uh, pareho naman po tayo nagdanais na itaguyod yung uh, moralidad at pareho naman tayo nagdanais po na itaguyod din yung mga karapatan na ating mga kababayan dahil lahat po tayo ay uh, um, hinirang na Panginoon sa kanyang imahe. I don't think there should be a conflict and um, from now on I think what I have been reading from the president himself is that he's exerting all efforts no, to um, have complete conciliation with the church and all religious groups. Okay, Ina? Sir, hi, sir. Sir, uh, you mentioned earlier that there's not been enough protest um, against the killings. How then would you describe, sir, the rally yesterday? Well, um, it wasn't a rally. It was a prayer for healing. So I... I take the organizers' words literally. It was not meant to be political. It was meant to be a religious activity. I leave it at that. Even if they were calling for the end to the killings well, at the same time? I don't think that's a political statement because no one, even the president, condones unnecessary and illegal killings. Mm -hmm. The president has said it over and over again. He will stand by his men if the killings are as a result of legal engagement and he will throw them behind bars if the killings are illegal. Okay. And lastly, sir, there's uh, some people are, are look at the, the prayer rally yesterday, as you mentioned, um, as an initiative of the so-called yellow um, group. As far as Malacayan is concerned, do you also see it that way? Well, you can't divorce the fact that many of the organizers are in fact identified with the political opposition. But we respect the right to peaceful assembly, and as I said, no, we join them when it comes to the matter of praying for healing for the nation. Okay, Joseph, follow up, ba? Uh, uh, Pia, follow up, ka? Other, uh, follow up, ba? Choose the new. Uh, thank you, sir. Follow up, lang. Uh, nabanggit nyo na kanina na the President is doing his effort para doon sa magkasundo ang gobyerno at ang ating simbahan. Would you advise him, sir, na gawin ito agad or the soonest possible time para okay na lahat? There's no need to advise kasi feeling ko yun ang gusto niya. Mm -hmm. So, why advise when he's already doing it? No? 
he could have spoken up against the prayer rally if he wanted to. He did not. But, uh, and please take note that um, although I'm a spokesperson, I do get approvals for statements that I make in this um, podium. You will not believe the amount of <laughs> the procedure <laughs> that I undergo to verify statements that I will make in this podium. Yes, sir. But as of yet, sir, wala pa namang schedule for that dialogue, sir. Wala pa naman. Well, you know, you're implying that the reconciliation requires a dialogue. There's different approaches to having reconciliation here. Okay, thank you. Sir. Okay, thank you. Uh, just, uh, I mean, Moro, Joseph Morong? So before I go to the main question, short lang, since you mentioned, how's your procedure now with uh, the dynamics with you and the president in terms of the statements? What time do you get the approval? Well, I'll just say that, um, okay, I'll be candid about it. I was careful with my comments on the telecoms, and I was um, careful with my comments on the issue, telecoms and, and what was the other one? No, no, no. The telecoms, I had to really, to really make sure that he stands by his statement that unless the improvement there's any improvement in the telecom sector, he will, he will allow a third party to come in. So I had to clarify that no? and confirm that. And I can't remember the other issue that I, I really had to clarify with him. Rehab center? Huh? Rehab center? No, no, no. Um, I can't remember. I'll remember. <laughs> Next time, tomorrow, you ask me again. I'll remember. Uh, use huh? the microphone. Sir, you confirm through Sap Bongo about these statements. Bahala na kami doon. <laughs> Sir, curious lang. Through him. Because well, he's the one close to the president. So. Where the president well, it depends. When I have the occasion, I confirm directly. If, if not, then I confirm it through Secretary Go. But I will be seeing the president again, and there are other matters that I want to confirm with him personally. Okay, la follow up. Sir, sa IPEC lang, no, naman na uh, may mutual admiration si President Duterte and President Trump. And they will have their first face-to-face uh, -face in, in Vietnam. How do we, what do we expect from the first probably meeting or well, encounter? Well, um, you know, don't expect too much because that's APEC. There's um, a lot more heads of states participating compared to ASEAN. And unlike ASEAN, he's not chairing APEC, no? So um, while I understand there will be bilateral talks, I don't think it will be as extensive as his bilateral talks here in Manila, plus the fact that he will be spending a whole, an extra day in Manila. No? So I expect that they would have more opportunity for, to interact with each other here in Manila. Although I'm sure they would have an occasion to have bilateral talks in Vietnam as well. Not well, in the sense that they will have to relate to each other, you know, physically. You know. But I'm not sure if there's actually bilateral, um, a bilateral meeting scheduled, you know, because they have not released the final schedule you know, of APEC. Okay. Last in question? fact, as a, for, as a matter of security, they don't actually release the, the time by hour by hour um, <coughs> schedule of the president in the overseas trips. You know. Even in, I've accompanied them as a company, accompanying delegation, we don't know ourselves the actual schedule until the day itself because they slip it under the door of our hotel room. No? And it, there's, of course, a tag. It's confidential. Okay, no more. Uh, last question, Pia Reynada. Sir, over the weekend, uh, or I think earlier this morning, see Secretary Andonar said that um, uh, Sir Ernie Abelli would still be in PCO as a USEC. Could we just get more details of what his position is? What will he be doing as USEC? He will be under secretary. He continues to be a, under secretary of PCOO. There hasn't been any movement at all as far as um, the position of secretary Abelia is concerned. So, so, sir, what is he doing now? What is his role as the USEC? Because he was USEC as a spokesman. Now you're the spokesman. So, what is his portfolio? I do not know because I'm. I can tell you this with all honesty. I don't have time to deal with anything else other than being spokesperson right now. Sir, is there a truth to any of the talks that 
uh, Caesar Abelli might be offered a post as an ambassador? I'm in no position to comment on presidential appointments. <laughs> Only the president can confirm that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, MPC. Thank you, presidential spokesperson. Hari Roque, thank you, MPC, Back to our main studio, Sa Radio Pilipinas, MPTV.